And welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Glad you're with us. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And today we're welcoming in a couple of candidates. Yes, we're, rep we're going to have the uh, two candidates for the 5th District Congressional seat. Join us, uh, the Republican nominee, James Langford, the Democrat nominee, uh, Billy Coyle. They're going to be here talking to you about what their ideas are, what their hopes for uh, the office will be. And we think you'll find this to be a very interesting show. It's all coming up today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. How do we create a better world of energy? The answer is obviously not foreign oil. Wind and solar need decades of development, and we've set the bar higher for the environment than coal can achieve. So the answer? American natural gas. It strengthens our economy, reduces pollution, and protects the environment. Learn more at chk.com. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Hospital. Go to saintsok.com and reserve your time online. Why didn't we think of that? Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Uh, we are really uh, honored, and I do mean that in the most sincere way, to have the two, uh, well, two of the candidates for the 5th District uh, race uh, present with us, uh, the Republican nominee and the Democratic nominee. I want to start to my right with the Democrat nominee for the 5th District Congressional race, uh, Billy Coyle. Uh, after high school, uh, uh, Billy uh, joined the Marine Corps, and he uh, had a cumulative eight years service as a, as a U.S. Marine. He did his undergraduate work at Florida State University and his law work at the University of Oklahoma. He practices law uh, in Oklahoma City at the Coyle Law Firm and has now for a number of years. He serves on the parish council of his church. He is married and has one child. Uh, to my left is James Langford, the Republican nominee for the 5th District uh, uh, position. He did his undergraduate work at the University of Texas, did his Master's in Divinity at Southwestern Seminary. Uh, he, uh, after seminary work, he moved to Edmond and uh, went to work with the Baptist Convention, Baptist General Convention. He immediately became director of Falls Creek, which he served uh, as for 13 years and that is the largest Christian camp in the nation. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, just last year, uh, Falls Creek served over 51,000 people. He is married and has two children, and we welcome both of you to the verdict. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. We'll, we'll start with you. the most basic of questions. Why are you running for Congress? James, you go first. Well, this was a sense of calling in my life. Uh, I have not been uh, in politics ever before, not even student council. Uh, for me, this was a departure from what I've been doing. 42 years old, uh, never been involved in political things, but had a real sense of calling in my life to say something has got to happen. It's really not all that different than what I've experienced in a lot of Oklahomans. 
Uh, there are a lot of people that have never been involved in politics this year that have stood up and said, we've got to get engaged, whether it's behind the scenes or running as candidates. We've seen it all over the country. And uh, so I'm in the middle of that as well. So resigned from my position at False Creek and stepped in to run. Billy? Well, uh, four months ago I was sitting in my office, and I'm doing this for the people of the 5th District. Uh, you know, I've never been in politics before myself, and I think now is the time that, that, that people, that we put partisan bickering behind and start moving America forward. Uh, and four months ago when I was sitting in my office, uh, I knew that it was time for me to step up and put some leadership in this Congress and show America what an Oklahoman looks like in the United States Congress. Well, let me uh, next uh, direct the next question to you, Billy, and then uh, James will have a chance to uh, feel the same question. What about your personal background and experience qualifies you for this position? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, first of all, uh, when I was 18 years old, uh, I did like any good man would do. I joined the United States Marine Corps. I spent seven years in the Marine Corps, uh, in the reserves mainly, uh, attaining the rank of Sergeant of Marines. Then I went to college, got an undergraduate degree in finance, so I have a business background in finance. I then went to work as a stockbroker for a couple years. Uh, coming back, went to law school uh, at the University of Oklahoma, uh, and have been practicing law as a uh, solo practitioner for the last seven years. I'm, I'm with a firm, a, you know, a family firm, but it's, you know, it's a business that I've been running. Uh, and I think that those things, you look at all, the combination of everything I've done in my life, living in the world like I have, I think uh, separates me from everybody else and makes me a very qualified candidate for this job. Well, Billy, let me stay with you and ask you another question. Uh, what are the uh, uh, voters of the 5th District most interested in? Well, I think it boils, I think there's no doubt that it's the economy and jobs. And when you look right here in the 5th District and you say to yourself, you know, GM, Dayton Tire, Lucent, Xerox, People want to know where these jobs went and how in America are we going to get America working again. Mm -hmm. You know, people understand that the, uh, that the debt America is in right now, they're offended by it. But they also want to find a way to get America working again. We cannot continue to send all the jobs overseas and expect America to just live off debt. Uh, James, okay. what in your background qualifies you to, to run for Congress? It's people. <laughs> That's what I've been dealing with my whole life. Um, when uh, you look at the tasks I've done, for instance, at Falls Creek, we have 51,000 people. Uh, a summer that are there, we deal with 900 different groups. We deal with thousands of people. Uh, we deal with uh, hiring and firing staff. We deal with the budgets. We deal with all those dynamics that you that you have to handle handling that many people in that many groups. Uh, so I'm used to dealing with problems and issues and looking people in the face, and I have to come up with solutions. Uh, in the tasks that I've been doing at Falls Creek and other places, you can't just talk about problems. You have to actually solve those. And, and keep moving forward. So that has been my passion. And when you travel the 5th District talking to voters, what are they interested in and, and where do you stand on those important issues? Yeah, the number one thing that comes up all the time is debt. Uh, people are very frustrated with what's happening currently with this legislature. It's, uh, as I've described it many times, this is the first time in American history that any generation of leaders has looked at the next generation and it looked at the problems of our day and have said, times are tough. I think I'll sacrifice my children for the sake of our benefit. And so there's this continual piling on of debt and of pushing away the difficult problems of the day and saying, we'll solve those problems some other time later. Right now, we need to be able to resolve and make it better for us. Uh, and that's the big thing I hear from a lot of people. Uh, immigration comes up a lot, uh, a lot of conversation about uh, where are we going to go as a nation, what is the plan. Uh, a lot of the taxes and the piling on of things that are happening to small businesses, that gets discussed a lot. Uh, but the number one thing that comes up all the time is people are frustrated with how we're spending. Mm -hmm. uh, both of your websites and your materials indicated that uh, creating jobs and stimulating the economy uh, are high priorities for you. Uh, Billy, let me direct this to you. Uh, if you were elected, what would you try to see uh, get done that would uh, stimulate jobs and uh, help the economy? Well, I think right now, if you look in America right now, uh, we're $13 trillion in debt, but they've got $3 trillion sitting on the sidelines that people just aren't willing to invest. And the reason they won't, don't want to invest it is because they don't have the confidence in America. And that's what we have to do. Uh, I think we have to extend the, the tax cuts that are out there for another five years just to give people the incentive to know that, hey, your taxes aren't going to be raised. Get this money off the sidelines. Let's get it in there. We, you know, banks have to feel confident that they're going to lend again. If banks will stop, start lending again, I think we can get out of this debt. The other thing we have to do is, if we've lost all these jobs overseas, it's America, and we're going to have to create something new. And I think that's where we bring in the energy sector. 
I think we need to create a whole new economy based on energy, take it to a whole new level. And I mean, I, I strictly mean that. I think that means converting, beginning now by converting all fleet vehicles to natural gas. We have to make energy, and especially in Oklahoma, it can fuel an economy like we've never seen here before. Uh, and so I think that that would help create jobs now. We also have to cut corporate taxes uh, on corporations to allow these companies to say, hey, you know, don't send that job overseas to be made using slave labor for 25 cents. Keep that American job here in America. James, stimulating yeah. the economy. Yeah, one of the biggest issues we have right now with uh, the economy is the fact that the federal government is constantly tweaking on everything. Uh, the Democrat legislature uh, the last two years has played with health care, uh, taken over auto companies, uh, re reworked our finance system top to bottom. Uh, it's created this tremendous amount of uncertainty uh, in our whole economy. Uh, when I talk to business folks, the number one thing they say is, we're not hiring right now because we don't know what this legislature is going to do to us. And so we're on hold. We need to hire people. We're not going to take the risk. Uh, I understand that. Uh, that's, that's the dynamic of, I don't know how much this employee is going to cost in taxes. I don't know how much it's going to cost in health care cost. Uh, I don't know if I can keep them for four months. Uh, so, yeah, a, lo a lot of people are not hiring because the federal government is constantly tinkering with every part of our economy. Uh, we need to back up and say the federal government is not the one that runs every business. Uh, businesses run business, and we need to start pulling back the number of things that they're doing. Uh, real briefly, at least just get started on it, James. Uh, you, along with Billy, list uh, energy industry as an important issue in this campaign. But, what would you try to do in regard to energy? Yeah, you bet. There's a lot of things that have to happen in the energy industry. Uh, number one of those is we've got to be able to back up the EPA and what the Obama administration is doing to our energy. Uh, currently, uh, they're cutting off the western part of the United States for drilling. Uh, they're continually talking about the intangible drilling costs. Uh, it, for instance, uh, this whole transportation thing that uh, the Obama administration floated this week saying we're going to try to increase jobs by increasing transportation. Uh, the way they're going to fund that is by pulling back uh, drilling and the intangible drilling costs uh, from our energy companies. Uh, there's this sense that I can go kill off jobs in the energy sector and give them the transportation and I've just created transportation jobs. Uh, really what they're doing is taking away from one industry and giving it to another that is their preference. Uh, so we have got to uh, help this federal government understand that this economy still runs on okay. fossil fuels. We'll get to a break. We'll let Billy respond. We're watching uh, the two leading candidates for the 5th District Congressional Race in the state of Oklahoma. We'll be right back with more on The Verdict right after this. I remember walking into the academy and seeing the Highway Patrol core values, the professionalism, you know, the courage, the bravery, integrity, and I realized that those are some of the same qualities that I was taught by my grandmother that the Chickasaw Nation valued in their people. We had uh, received calls of heavy, heavy rain. I mean, it was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. We had seen the white pickup truck with the two elderly people in it. There was no means of escape. And looking down at these people, you know, you could see the terror in their eyes. And we knew we had to make a move or, or these people would probably die. And I reached down and grabbed their arm to help pull them up. I remember thinking, these people are going to live. You know, this is going to work out. I appreciate this citation, but that's what we do. That's what we're expected to do. I'm glad that I was able to carry on that tradition of bravery and courage under strife. What's your idea of security? A good paying, sustainable job? A solid economy? Less dependence on foreign energy? We can achieve it with the help of one industry, American oil and natural gas. It creates energy, jobs, and a strong economic base we can rely on. New technologies open vast reserves that will supply our energy needs far into the future. Because security, by every definition, is worth protecting. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Billy Coyle and James Langford are our guests. They are the Democrat and Republican candidates for the 5th District Congressional seat. And Billy, we talked a little bit about energy and, and uh, your, your beliefs that, uh, that energy policy is critical to this seat. Well, I think there's just no doubt about it. And I think the federal government is going to have to. I think we need to put an energy policy in place that focuses on Oklahoma resources. 
Uh, I mean, I think, I truly believe in America, we're going to have to wean ourselves off of foreign oil and start using America's oil and start using America's natural gas. Uh, and we can do this. And I think it's imperative that uh, we sit down, but throw all politics aside, form a bipartisan committee, and come up with solutions. You know, everybody, lobbyists are deep in these uh, communities. B uh, big coal has a huge lobby in Washington. And we can use coal, too. I mean, there's no, there's no reason to throw coal out of the picture because it's a cheap fossil fuel. But we have to sit down and start using more of Americans' resources and get off foreign oil with the countries that want to do harm to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think we need to obviously focus on a, a national energy plan. Well, let me ask you, uh, we're going to ask you both, but let me start with you, Billy, on uh, health care. Where are you on health care issues and particularly health care insurance? Well, I, I read the Wall Street Journal today and the front page says that insurance premiums are going up and our insurance rates are going up. I, I can't believe it because that was what we're trying to solve with health care is make health care cheaper. Uh, that's the reason that I've never supported this bill fully. There are certain things that I do support. I mean, you know, extending the age to 26, you know, if you have a pre-existing condition, being able to get health care. But the fact is, you know, something that's 2,100 pages long, that every week we read something new in the newspaper about what's going to happen, I don't think is good for America. I think this is another issue that we're going to have to sit down because there are several issues in the bill that many Americans want to see change. But there are also things like an increase in, in rates that Americans don't want to see happen. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is an issue that uh, if I, when I go to Washington, I am not going to champion a uh, repeal, repeal, repeal effort. I'm going to champion, let's find what we can make work and what can't make work, let's get rid of it. James, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, the, the struggle with the health care uh, legislation that's now law is that there are a lot of things that are coming down the pike that a lot of Republicans were shaking the gates in Washington and saying these things are going to happen. And then Democrats on the whole were saying, no, we're going to fix those things, we're going to fix those things. And now they're beginning to occur. Uh, unfortunately for the Democrats, they're occurring right before the election. Uh, health care costs are going up. Uh, premiums are going up. These are all the things that we said were going to occur that actually are occurring. Uh, you can't force a company by basically taking them over and saying here are the things that you're going to do and that you're going to cover uh, and not have costs rise. Uh, that's not possible. Money just doesn't come out of thin air. Uh, so it is going to be a challenge. As Republicans, we are going to have to be able to push back on this. We are going to have to uh, repeal areas of this uh, law. Uh, we are going to have to defund uh, sections of it and to say these agencies don't come into play. Uh, if we don't, uh, the bill will continue to move forward. Or actually, it's the law now. It will continue to move forward. There are 159 new agencies that are created with this new health care law. Uh, there are 16,500 new IRS agents that are hired to oversee insurance companies with this new law. We cannot allow the funding of those things and that thing to continue to move forward. Uh, we've got to replace this thing. On its face, it assumes the best way to control health care costs is for the federal government to take over health care. I do not agree. Let's switch to veterans issues. Where sure. are you on those issues? I uh, come from a strong military family, actually. Um, my uh, stepfather was in the Navy. Uh, my father-in-law was a Vietnam vet in the Army. Uh, so growing up kind of around that, and it permeates my whole family in every area on that. Um, it, it's a big deal for our particular district. Uh, Tinker Air Force Base is the largest single-site employer in the state. Uh, we've got to continue to work on protecting what's happening in Tinker, uh, content, continue to protect our bases from BRAC uh, commissions that may come. Uh, at some point in the future, there's not one scheduled currently, but they will come again. And uh, so we've got to continue to set up our cities and our regions and our counties and uh, be well prepared and well suited for that. Uh, we should be the best maintenance facility in the entire country of what's happening in Tinker. Well, we currently are. We need to continue to maintain that and continue to push that forward. So whether that be VA hospital and getting a chance to look at uh, are we taking care of our veterans the best possible way or whether that's continuing to protect Tinker uh, in the 45th, uh, we need to continue to do those things. All right. And Billy, veterans issues? Well, obviously, as a, uh, as a Marine Corps veteran, you know, veterans issues are near and dear to my heart. And, you know, when you look at us fighting in the longest war in American history in Afghanistan, and, you know, we don't send young men and women over there for just, you know, a six-month or one-year tour. We're sending them over there for now two, three, four different times of, of tours. And I think we need to take a long, hard look. I understand that General Petraeus is, is going to uh, do a complete overset and, or, or oversight of the, of the war and give his opinion, and I'll respect his opinion. But I, I, I will still continue to say that driving around and getting blown up is not a solution to terrorism. 
Uh, and you know, when you hear the, the Commandant of the Marine Corps last week call out and say that the Marine Corps is not a stationary force, we, we need to pull back, get the troops ready for another attack, uh, you, you wonder what we're doing. And when my brother-in-law comes, um, comes home from Iraq, two tours, comes home, he tries to apply for his VA, they say, well, it's going to take six months to get it going, why don't you go ahead and take private loans out now? That's wrong to me. Uh, you know, you did two tours in Iraq. You ought to get, you know, you ought to get your education. That's what you went and fought for our country for. So I think, uh, I think we just need to really take a long, hard look at what we're doing. And I will always have veterans' issues uh, near to me. We want to give each candidate a chance to uh, address the voters of the fifth district. And so we have flipped a coin, and the result of that coin flip was that Billy will go first. So Billy, why should the people of the fifth district elect you to Congress? Well, the people of the 5th District should elect me because, you know, first and foremost, when I go to the United States Congress, I intend to not only challenge the Republican Party, but to challenge the Democratic Party. I think it's time to throw bipartisan politics or partisan politics to the side and start working on issues straight down the middle. I'm tired of the extreme left just as much as I'm tired of the extreme right. Everybody in middle America is caught up in this thing. I think we can do it. We've got three trillion sitting on the sideline. You know, 10 years ago, we had a budget surplus. Now we're in, obviously, a deep budget debt, but I think we can get out of it. I think it begins by restoring confidence in America and focusing on jobs, jobs, jobs. We have to give businesses incentive, incentives to work here in America, but we also have to find a way to use energy in America to create a whole new economy that can be funded right here in America. So um, I just uh, I feel very good uh, about my election. I want people to know that every day, uh, you know, as they say in the Marine Corps, Semper Fidelis, you know, I will fight for my country, my God, and my Corps every day when I am in the United States Congress, and I will represent the district, the 5th District of Oklahoma with all my heart. James? Yeah. Uh, honored to be able to have your vote. Um, my, uh, my wife and I, we've been married 18 years. We have two daughters, uh, Hannah is 13 and Jordan who's 10. Uh, when our family uh, looks at all the issues as every other family does, uh, we look at the same thing. We look at finances, we look at future, we look at education, uh, we look at how we're doing as a state. And we're very passionate about those things. Uh, we have as a state, and I've bumped into a lot of people through this journey, uh, that for the first time in their life for many of them have stepped up and turned around and said, one of us needs to step up and go to Washington, D.C and start really representing who we are uh, as a state and as a people. Uh, I'm in that same boat with you. Uh, I'm also stepping up and saying, let's get busy. Let's get to work on these things. Uh, as the director of Falls Creek, dealing with so many people and so many families for so long, I understand firsthand the issues that families deal with, I understand the business issues that we're bumping up against, uh, understand the long-term problems that if we don't address now, we're going to be addressing in the next generation. Uh, I've always had a passion for that next generation. And that's been one thing that the government has historically looked at and said, well, let's do what's right for the next generation from the very beginning. We're not doing that anymore. Uh, we've got to start taking a long-term look instead of trying to do short-term solutions on things. Um, unashamedly Christian in who I am, unashamedly conservative in who I am, and unashamedly coming from outside of politics uh, to say we have got to address solutions uh, to these issues. James Langford, the Republican candidate for the 5th District. Billy Coyle, the yes. Democratic candidate for the 5th District. Thank you all both for giving yep. up your Honor time to be, be with us today. Appreciate Honor it. Be here. Thank you. And Thank the you. elections coming up. Kent and I will have a final word right after this. naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens.
to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. And welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers are wrapping up a show on the 5th District Congressional Race. Billy Coyle and James Langford were the guests. Well, and we really are grateful to those two gentlemen who are very busy to give us their time out of their hectic schedules to come visit with you folks. We asked them to do it. We knew you'd be interested in it. And we're glad they did it. We have some website information to pass along to you where you can get more information on the candidates. First, BillyCoyle2010.com. That's BillyCoyle2010.com. Also, you can get more information on James Lankford's uh, candidacy at jameslankford.com. That's James and then Lankford, L-A-N-K-F-O-R-D.com. But if you've got an idea for an upcoming show or a guest you'd like to see right here on The Verdict, we'd like to hear from you too, and you should go to our website and tell us about that idea. Our website address is theverdict.tv. That's theverdict.tv. And I'll mention that uh, we're coming up on our 500th show very soon. And so if, uh, if our viewers have an opportunity to, to think of an idea or a guess they'd like to see on that 500th show to help us commemorate it, now's the time. Now's the time. And I've got a suggestion for a guest on our okay. 500 show. Bennett Fletcher Myers, my newest grandchild. Congratulations. Uh, yes, born uh, uh, three weeks ago. And uh, he's just doing great. Bennett. Bennett. That's <laughs> terrific. That's a great name. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. Bennett. Welcome to the world. We'll be back next week with another show right here on The Verdict. See you then. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.